Welcome to a code report Quora response video. In this video, I'm going to be responding to a question that I previously answered on Quora, which was, how do I start with top coder challenges? Uh, so Michael Lynn, you can see at the bottom, requested me to ask, answer this question. If you have questions and you want them answered, Quora is a great place to do that. So be sure to follow me there. And if you have questions, you can ask them. Uh, I don't get to answering all of them, but I do um, check it every once in a while and post answers. And for this question, I answered it by basically saying that the key is to look for solutions that will pass all of the test cases that TopCoder provides, but it will fail the full system tests. And there are sort of two ways you can identify these test cases that aren't included in the test cases that TopCoder provides, um, but that'll definitely be in the full system tests. And the first one of those is time complexity, and the second one of those is corner cases. So time complexity, for me at least, is the more common one and the easier one to identify. Um, and that's when basically... Uh, if you take a look at the constraints of the problem and you notice that none of the test cases even come close to those constraints. Um, so this could be something that some programmers miss. And then corner cases are sort of the same thing, but not specifically for time complexity, just for some, some edge case or border case where you might have an empty list or an empty something or a maximal number or just some part of the problem you didn't read carefully enough and you might have missed. And I wasn't planning on making this video, but in this morning's Top Coder SRM 744 contest, I managed to successfully challenge uh, three different times. So I figured, why not make this video? Maybe some people will find it um, useful uh, because I followed to a T basically what I recommended in that Quora response. So you can see here, I didn't do that well in this contest. Uh, I came sixth. Um, in my room and I think 60th overall. If I hadn't have failed a corner case in the second problem, I would have come top 10. Um, but that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is the three successful challenges. So you get a plus 50 if you successfully challenge and you can see here at the bottom, my first challenge, my second challenge, and uh, my third challenge is here. Um, and so I'm just gonna walk you through sort of what my thought process was when I was attempting these problems and I noticed, oh, this is definitely gonna be uh, a potential for P for uh, a challenge opportunity. So um, it was the 500 and the 1,000 point problems that I noticed um, would have potential challenge possibilities. And so quickly I'm gonna read each of them. So for the 500 point problem, it says you're basically given a digit and you want to find out if the digit is magic. And there's two requirements. One, it has to be a square. And two, each of the digits have to follow this pattern. So the first digit has to be less than the second digit, which has to be greater than the third digit, which has to be less than the fourth digit, and so on. So it just ha sort of has to have this increasing, decreasing pattern, and it has to be a square. Um, and so the key thing to note here in this problem is that we have a limit on A and B um, being between sort of 1 and 10 billion. Uh, so 10 billion is, I believe, uh, 10 to the, or 10 to the 10. Um, and as previously mentioned in other videos, um, the way that typically time complexity sort of timeouts work is that per second that you're given per problem, you have um, 10 to the 8 operations. Uh, which means that for this problem, we have 2 times 10 to the 8. So that means if you have a linear algorithm for this problem, it's definitely going to time out um, by a couple orders of magnitude. So uh, the, the key for solving this problem is that you don't want to iterate through all the numbers between A and B, because A could be 1 and B could be 10 billion. What you want to iterate through is all the squares. So have an iterator that starts at 1, but then each time you're you're checking i times i, so you're only checking 1, 4, uh, 9, 16, 25, and so on. And so um, no longer is your algorithm going to be linear, it's going to be a square root, um, which will definitely pass. But the key to note is that some people won't catch this, and they might implement a linear algorithm, which is definitely what one person did. So when I was going through, uh, if we go back here, what what was the third challenge here? It was on Agarwal. So if we check Agarwal solution, um, and if you read this, you can see that basically uh, this individual did not um, loop through squares. They looped through all of the numbers between A and B, 
and then squared it inside the loop. So this is a linear algorithm in terms of time complexity, not a square root algorithm. Um, and so as soon as you notice this, you can just plug into the challenge, um, the constraints 1 and 10 billion, and you'll get a successful challenge. So that was the first problem uh, that I was able to successfully challenge, or technically the third one. It was the last one that I got to. Um, the other one was the 1,000 point problem. So if we take a look at this problem, it's a pretty short statement. It basically says we are looking at the first quadrant of an infinite square grid and its rows and columns are numbered starting from zero. Each cell contains the number max of row column mod three. So that means each of the elements in your square is going to be either zero, one, and two. And it says compute and re return the sum of all the cells RC such that uh, the elements are between these constraints, between R1, so row one and row two, and column one and column two. So basically you're given this huge grid square grid and then you're going to get be given these rows and columns which is going to be a sub rectangle within this square and they want you to sum up all the elements so the solution for this problem doesn't really matter once again we just want to take a look at the constraints and the constraints for this problem are going to be that we can have up to 10 to the 9 rows and 10 to the 9 columns which means that uh, this is going to be squared right so it's tip it's actually 10 to the 18 so uh, we basically, in order to solve this, anything that is looping over all of the rows and columns in between these constraints is going to fail. And if we come back, you can't see the initial scores for these, but some of the individuals solved this w within minutes of having opened it, which um, is definitely an indicator that they potentially were just sort of brute force solving it. Because it's a very easy problem to brute force solve, but to do it such that it's not going to time out is more difficult. And you can see that inside this room, only one individual was able to successfully solve it, and it took them quite a bit of time because uh, this number of points degrades from 1,000. Um, and so basically what you wanted to do is just go in and look for nested for loops, which if we take a look at the um, two people, so once again, Agarwal was one of them. Uh, if we take a look at this solution, we instantly see two nested for loops, no optimizations. This is just a simple brute force. This is going to fail. And so I just, I think I input not the maximum, but just below the maximum. So it was 9 billion or, or mm, not 9 billion, 999 million. And, uh, and for the other individual, it was very similar. So if we look at IIT, this individual, you take a look at their code. Once again, two nested for loops, no optimizations. This is just a brute force, and you can challenge this pretty successfully. So these aren't showing any corner cases. This is all just time complexity, but uh, the things to look for are, and oh, I guess I didn't, I didn't highlight that. So if we, if, if we take a look at the examples that these problems provide, um, so this is the third problem where we're looking at rows and columns. So here we have two rows, three columns. That's the, the difference between these. So here we have only one row, or I guess it's inclusive. So this is actually three rows and four columns. This is one row and seven columns. The point is none of these come close to 10 to the 9, 1 billion, um, which means that people can code their brute force solution and then they're going to get all green checks for their test cases um, but it's going to end up failing the system test after the contest is over and if we go back and take a look at the 500 point problem uh, and take a look at the test cases that they provide once again this can be up to 10 billion but if we look 1 to 64 50 to 60 and the biggest we get is what is this 1 million 304 thousand 164 and 2 million so if we take the difference here, this is less than a million, which is less than 10 to the 6, and that will pass for a linear solution. So there's going to be, uh, there was only one individual that I found, but there's going to be some people that code a linear solution. It's going to pass all the test cases, and then they're going to submit it, but they're not going to realize that. Uh, the test cases provided don't, um, don't force you to the worst case uh, you know, time limit. Um, so that's what you want to look for, is take a look at the constraints. For top coder, all the problems always have a two second limit. If you're on code forces, you just have to check the problem, but usually it's either one second or two seconds. And uh, keep in mind that 10 to the 8 operations and just check, um, given the constraints of the problem and sort of the test cases that they have, is it possible for people to code a suboptimal solution um, that will end up failing given a sort of worst case 
test case, and then you just need to challenge them with one of those test cases. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, if you're not competing in the top coder contests, I, I definitely recommend you do. Um, there one, it's one of my uh, favorite sites, even though it's one of the less popular ones, um, just because of the format. I like the challenging phase, and uh, they have pretty good problems. So um, be sure to follow me on Quora, and be sure to check out Top Coder if you're not already a member. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.